Hi, I hope you guys are all doing okay. So I recently added a display module to my Onboard Diagnostics 2 interface for my car. And while I was sort of doing a complete rewrite, I wanted to check out the functionality and performance of different MCP2515 CAN bus libraries available for the Arduino framework. I found the test to be quite surprising with results ranging from a maximum of only 65% bus capacity to one that could easily achieve 100% bus capacity. The best one could run this 500 kilobits per second CAN bus at 100% capacity and had excellent timing for every frame, while others were just consistently slower than the fastest CAN bus library. Others had large gaps between the frames at regular intervals. Before moving on, let's have a look at some live data using an oscilloscope on a test vehicle so we can determine how much data the CAN bus library will need to process each second. The test car is a Land Rover Freelander 2, a model year 2015, technical wiring architecture with a VIN number of greater than 382339. It's worth noting that older Freelander 2 models have a different wiring diagram and different modules attached, and likely leading to variations in CAN data, although the onboard Diagnostics 2 connector remains consistent, and so does the speed of the two CAN buses. My car, this Land Rover Freelander 2, my Y 2015, most likely shares similarities to the early Land Rover Evoke models, and it will be interesting to compare the two CAN IDs. On the Freelander 2, the high-speed CAN bus which operates at 500 kilobits per second, there was a minimum gap between CAN frames of 22 microseconds after the acknowledgement slot. This indicates that the high-speed CAN bus operates at 100% capacity or saturated for short bursts. In my test data, short bursts was an average of about 3.1 millisecond or 13 CAN frames back to back. Considering this, we need to ensure that our onboard Diagnostics 2 interface is able to capture back-to-back -back frames without missing any. Conversely, the maximum gap between the CAN frames is 5.2 milliseconds. Moving on to the medium speed CAN bus, which on the Freelander 2 operates at 125 kilobits per second. The minimum gap between CAN frames on this bus was 88 microseconds after the acknowledgement slot. This again indicates that the medium speed CAN bus operates at 100% capacity. In my test data, I found segments of 18.58 milliseconds or 19 frames back to back. Given this, we must assume that at some points in time, the Freelander 2 will be transmitting at 100% capacity on both the high speed and medium speed CAN buses, and our onboard Diagnostics 2 interface must be able to capture all these frames. So, in conclusion, for my car, on the high-speed CAN bus at 500 kilobits per second, we receive 1,434 frames or messages per second. And on the medium-speed CAN bus running at 125 kilobits per second, we receive 560 frames or messages per second. If you found this video anywhere between entertaining and informative, then please consider hitting that like button. You may also want to make my day and hit that subscribe button while you're there. Go ahead, make my day. Seriously though, no pressure, honest. What follows next is a series of tests. First of all, we start off using the same library in both the sender and the receiver. Then we take the fastest sender and test it against each of the libraries as the receiver. And finally, we then use all the libraries to connect to the test vehicle. In this video, I intend to review the findings during those tests. And while it's not my intention to upset any developer or maintainer of any of the libraries, that I review here. It is hoped that I can offer some sort of constructive insights into each one of the libraries in terms of functionality and performance so people can make an informed choice of which library to use in their projects. For consistency, the same hardware was used for every test and was connected to the same CAN bus playground. The sender circuit consisted of an ESP32, here marked ESP1, and two MCP2515 modules marked here MCP1 and MCP2. It's worth noting that both MCP1 and MCP2 are connected to the ESP VSPI port. Only MCP1 has an active cable to select within the code, and therefore it is the only one that is being used. The plug on the left hand side is a signal sent from the receiver to say when the test has failed and thus it informs the sender to slow down because it's sending information too fast for the receiver to process it. The receiver was also an ESP32, 
marked here ESP2 and that also had two MCP2515 CAN bus modules attached marked here MCP3 and MCP4. Again, like the sender, although they are both attached to the VSPI bus on the ESP32, only MCP3 was actually in operation and being controlled by a cable select pin. It's also worth noting for the receiver that we have a display physically attached, although no driver was loaded and therefore not being controlled. In terms of the code, only minimal changes were made. Here we see the sending code for both the slowest and the fastest library. We can see there on line 28 that we start off with a different sender delay. This is increased slowly by the receiver every time a test is failed. And this was set so as I could create uh, repeatability tests without waiting a long time. We've got the changes for the particular library that needs to be installed. We've got some changes around how the library needs to be configured to start it. We've got some changes there. We didn't use one shot on this on this test. It's, it wasn't required. There were some data setup changes there required for that for each library. We've got the sending of the message and how the library requires the data to be sent or the or the coding to send the, the data. And then this is how again part of the control and how the library it needs to set up. And again for the receiver library. We we're in the same position where we just alter the lines of code that needed to be altered to make a fair comparison between the two libraries. Let's take a quick look at the libraries that I tested and each of these libraries can be easily installed into your IDE using the Arduino Library Manager. Note that for the MCP CAN bus by Longan Labs there is an original and altered version I altered the version because I found that with a quick and easy change to the library, you can speed up the library depending on what speed you're running the bus at. We'll discuss that in more detail later. Let's take a look at the results for each library when sending CAN frames to the receiver. The first test measures the time taken to command the library to send a single frame. Note that for the ACAN 2515 is an extremely low number with a star. This is because the ACAN library actually has a set of buffers within the library itself. So the time measured is actually only the data being placed into a buffer in the library. And we should understand that at some point in the future, an interrupt will call and take the flow of the code away from the user code back to the library while it actually sends the frame. The best performing library here is the Arduino MCP2515 by AutoWP. As you can see, it only takes 120 microseconds to command the library to send the next packet of data as a CAM frame on the bus. Given that this bus speed is 500 kilobits per second, the minimum time to send a full frame is 222 microseconds, thus leaving the user code a spare 122 microseconds to prepare the next frame for processing. The second set of test results is where the sender sends 10,000 CAN frames to the receiver. At the end of the test, the receiver reports back if it didn't receive all 10,000 frames. In such a case, the sender adds another microsecond delay in between sending each frame until such time as the receiver receives all the frames. We can see the final sender test delay in the first column. In the second column, this is the time it took the sender to send all the 10,000 frames on the final test. The third column is the average send time for the library. So this is think of this as the time the user code requests or commands the library to send another frame and how much time that library takes up before it passes the flow back to the user code. The final column is the bus capacity sustained successfully. As we see in this test, the worst performing library was the AA MCP2515 by code LJO, only managing to fill the bus to 65% capacity. Whereas again, the MCP2515 by AutoWP managed to sustain 100% bus capacity. I think it's worth pointing out that my altered version of the MCP CAN bus by Longan Labs, which was a simple change, did manage to have a respectable 92% bus capacity. 
think at this point it's worth stating that you wouldn't really want to run a CAN bus at 100% capacity due to the arbitration, which could lead to issues. So generally speaking, a rule of thumb would actually be 70 to 80% CAN bus capacity as a maximum. That said, what we will discover from the car is that many CAN bus messages are sent back to back. There could be as many as 20 messages sent back to back. So it's imperative that our receiver can receive them as quickly as possible. Otherwise, we will drop frames. At this point, I want to cover off the changes I made to the MCP CAN bus library by Longan Labs that changed the sustainable bus capacity from 66% to 92%. The change was very simple and it can be found here in this MCP underscore CAN underscore DFS dot H file. And we simply scroll down to this line here and alter the timeout value. Initially, this was 50 as shown here, but I found for the 500 kilobits per second bus, then a value of seven was perfect. And for 125 kilobits per second, 13 was perfect. I also have to point out here in the MCP can dot H file that I had to add these extra definitions for my two buses because natively the library doesn't support 8 megahertz crystals. For completeness, let's just have a look at the results we found on the receiving side of this test. I'll not spend much time on these results as my next test conclusively proved that these results were influenced by the sender's ability to place data onto the bus. The data here marked with stars is simply because, as with the sender, there is buffering in play within the library itself, and therefore we're not measuring like for like as we are with the other libraries. I'll also point out I discovered at this point that AAMCP2515 by code LJO was a very new library and certainly not as mature as the other libraries here on test. However, I think the results in the next set of tests were very surprising. After reviewing the data on the car, we should understand why it's absolutely imperative that this Arduino Canvas library must be able to receive data at 100%. So now we need to find which of these libraries can actually receive data at 100%. And given that there was only one library that could actually populate the bus to 100% capacity, which was the Arduino MCP2515 library by AutoWP, then this was the obvious choice for the sending side. Looking at these tests where the sender is populating the bus at 100% capacity and the receiver is expected to receive all of those messages, then only two libraries managed to maintain 100% success rate. These were AAMCP2515 by code LGO and Arduino MCP2515 by AutoWP. At this point, it was time to flash the receiver with each of the libraries so you could collect some live canvas data from the car. These tests were completed twice to ensure consistency of the data and were completed with the engine running. Starting with the high speed CAN bus at 500 kilobits per second, we can see that the total time took just short of seven seconds to capture 10,000 frames. We see that the frames per second is consistent with our other testing for all but the ACAN2515 library. Not quite sure why this is slightly higher, but I suspect it's actually an error within the library itself. Maybe some sort of semaphore or locking issue since it uses its own internal buffering and interrupts heavily to read the data. The next two columns are consistent with the bench testing that we performed when the CAN bus was running at 100% capacity. The next three columns are measuring the gaps presented between each CAN frame. So you've got a minimum, an average and a maximum. This data goes some way to explaining why when these libraries were presented on the bench with a CAN bus running at 100% all the time could not keep up. And if we think that although a CAN frame may be placed into the MCP2515, the first one will be picked up immediately. When the next one arrives, the data may have been sat in the MCP2515 buffer for maybe five microseconds before it's picked up and the next one might have sat there for 10 microseconds. But even at that rate, with a fan frame taking 222 microseconds, you would need 44 can frames before that first buffer place would actually be full when the next frame was wanting to be written to another buffer. Luckily, the MCP2515 module has three buffers available. 
So we're looking at in excess of about 120 frames before we would miss a frame. And in the final column, we can see that the high speed CAN bus is running at approximately 34% bus capacity. We've used a 119 bits per frame to calculate this as some frames will require some level of stuffing to keep the CAN bus in sync. Moving on to the medium speed CAN bus running at 125 kilobits per second, we can see that we've got the same columns with the same explanations and the data is again is consistent with other findings on the bench. And here we see on this bus we are running at approximately 53% bus capacity. If you found this video anywhere between entertaining and informative, then please consider hitting that like button. You may also want to make my day and hit that subscribe button while you're there. Go ahead, make my day. Seriously though, no pressure, honest. I think in conclusion, I'm going to use the Arduino MCP2515 Campbell's library for my project. And my reasoning there is it's probably a very mature library with good support. And it did do well, probably the, well, it certainly was the best on the bench, although all libraries achieved on the, on the vehicle itself, given, uh, given it wasn't running at hundred percent. But I think the one to watch is the ACAN library. And the reason why I say that is I think that if you were trying to measure a, a, a CAN bus that was running at a faster speed, maybe the one megabits per second, for instance. We saw that the Auto WP library took 120 microseconds to actually perform a read of the SPI bus, the MCP2515. Well, at one megabits per second, then the CAN frame itself would only be 111 microseconds. So some nine microseconds shorter than it would take to read do the reading of that. So on those back to back signals, you would soon use up your three buffer spaces within the MCP2515, therefore making it imperative that the library itself could do some buffering and was using interrupts to read as and when it could. I'm also really pleased to report that it works successfully when attached to my Land Rover Freelander 2 and during the analysis of the CAN bus capacity, it will read both the high speed and medium speed CAN bus at the same time and manage to successfully record all the messages to the SD card. For information, the SD card has an STM32 driving the SD card write functionality and the ESP32 is just passing the serial data to the card. Once the SD card has been removed, it can be loaded into Savican for post recording analysis. If you found this video anywhere between entertaining and informative, then please consider hitting that like button. You may also want to make my day and hit that subscribe button while you're there. Go ahead, make my day. Seriously though, no pressure, honest.